Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Greetings of peace and blessings everyone. We are continuing the State of the Mind series and today's episode is very, very significant because it covers the cancer that consumes the body of the Muslim community. Sadly, we have celebrity imams and self-proclaimed scholars going against everything that is Islamic, participating in shirk rituals and supporting agendas that don't only contradict our belief, but also work towards eradicating human values and what humanity stands for. Look around. What do you see? The world is in boiling stage right now. Everywhere we look, we see confusion. Everywhere we go, there is illusion. And unfortunately, there is no way out of this collusion except prayers and seclusion. This is the times of the Prophet of Mercy, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, spoke about. And Uqba ibn Amir qal, qultu ya Rasulullah, man najat? Qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, amsik alayka lisanaka wal yasa'aka baytuka wabki ala khati'atik. Uqba ibn Amir reported, I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what will save us? The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Restrain your tongue, let your house be enough for you, and weep for your sins. The source of this hadith is Sunan at tirmidhi 2406, and the great is Sahih, authentic according to Imam al Albani. Look at the context of the hadith that is considered a hadith on salvation. Look at the eloquence of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This hadith is divided into three parts. Let's analyze it together, inshallah. The first, had, the first part starts with restrain your tongue. This is an order and not some sort of an opinion. When we say silence is gold, it is indeed. Research and even psychology recommends silence for self-development. It is the power of silence. Silence is an opportunity to reflect. While the whole world is in rage, allow and welcome silence. Spending time in silence has been found to have positive effects on the body in terms of reducing blood pressure, boosting the immune system, reducing blood cortisol, promoting hormone regulation, and prevention of arterial plague formation. Psychology also is clear that silence has many benefits, including enhanced creativity, focus, self-control, self-awareness, perspective, and spirituality. Be alone in your thoughts, because silence speaks volumes. Silence indicates maturity and the depth of spirituality. You want to be wise? Silence is the highway of wisdom. Unfortunately, the whole world is talking and no one is taking a break. We have so many geniuses today and quite frankly, it has become challenging to speak or get involved in any work, especially in the Muslim community, because you can't go anywhere. Everywhere is, everyone is a scholar, everyone knows better, and no one is willing to listen. The tongue is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a great tool of communication. The tongue can also be a weapon of mass destruction since every war starts with, this, with, with words. Animals are unable to speak, we are. So how can we uh, show gratefulness for our tongue? That's right, by using it in the right way keeping the tongue busy in dhikr and supplication is better. There is a philosophy behind the tongue and it is as follows. Talk to people a little and talk to the Almighty often for perhaps our hearts will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. Sahl ibn Sa'd reported that the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said, whoever guards what is between his jaws and the legs, I shall guarantee him paradise. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. You guard what's between the jaws, which is the tongue, by not speaking about the things that don't concern you. For indeed, every time that you speak a word, it takes control over you. Every time you speak a word, it takes control over you. And you guard what be what's between your legs, which is the private parts, but not by not engaging in illegal activities outside of the norm. This is a promise from the Prophet of Mercy, alayhi salatu wasalam, that whoever controls the chastity of what is between his jaws and legs, paradise is guar guaranteed for him or her.
He doesn't say it based on his own desires. His promise is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs him regarding his ser this serious issue. The second part of the hadith is, let your house be enough for you. Spend time with your family. Concentrate on your family. Be attached to your family. Give yourself the opportunity to grow with your family. Trust me, the only peace and happiness you will ever have is in your family. Above all, great reward is earned by those who attend their family. خيركم خيركم the best of you are the best to their families. The third part of the hadith is cover over your sins or cry over your sins. No one is perfect, right? We talked about this at the beginning of this series. All of us at some point in our lives did some dumb stuff. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of our sins and shortcomings. But it's very important to feel regret and cry over our sins. If one can cry over her or his sins, it means that he or she has found the true path of divine forgiveness. Moreover, a person who can cry for his sins reviews the past properly. On the other hand, on one hand, and tends to look to the future with more care on the other hand. No one is perfect. The moment we hold ourselves accountable for our shortcomings, regret them and cry sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are already on the right path to do the right thing. At this moment, we start to be more careful so as not to commit such sins which inflict serious wounds in our spiritual world. The more we cut our worldly affairs and cry over our sins, the closer we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some isolation and some seclusion have benefits not only to the body but also to the soul. Our problems are many because the root problem is never addressed. We haven't seen our prominent scholars empirically deal with these topics. We're in a crisis of all crises. We're in an age of controlled and censored information. People have more access to whatever the narrative of the system wants us to digest. This is very important in our time. Meditation or prayer, in other words, has disappeared from our houses, our workplaces, and most importantly, from our places of worship. Philosophers and scientists have been silenced while the fanatics were given the stage. If we don't have these people, philosophers and scientists, in, our, in other words, artists and critical thinkers, we lose the intellectual defenders of faith. And then defense become either fanaticism or even worse, violence, because fanaticism often leads to violence. The world is a very troubling stage right now. And as Muslims, we have contributed to this chaos the most. And if you don't think so, I don't know what planet you're on. And that's why our focus should be on the youth. We should be teaching our children the, the, the things that they could never ever lose. Teach them the Quran, teach them Al-Fatiha with its meanings and the devotional foundations. Because when we lose our intellectual foundations, then unfortunately the devotional foundations often follow. That's why we focus on the youth for a generation of artists, critical thinkers, and philosophers. We need a spiritual awakening connected to an intellectual awakening. But before that takes place, we need an awakening of the heart. We need to wake up. And if you're watching this, you're already there. All of these crises, crisis of knowledge, crisis of identity, crisis of values and ethics, economic and political crisis, they're either addressed at a superficial level or ignored. We no longer deal with the root of the problems. We no longer deal with our problems with a philosophical approach. There is a philosophy behind everything. There is a philosophy behind consumerism. There is a philosophy behind misinformation, disinformation. There is a philosophy behind ignorance. There is a philosophy behind immorality. There is a philosophy behind capitalism. There is a philosophy behind every single thing happening around us in this world. Everything has a philosophy behind it and we need to understand this reality. If we don't understand the philosophy behind a matter, we can't address it properly. 
Anyone who works in the emergency room understands that our job is to stabilize, diagnose, and treat the patient. The moral of the story is you can't issue a treatment without a diagnosis. And it's a tragedy that we have people who are ignorantly ignorant that they are ignorant. Ignorant people are blind instrument of their own destruction. And what's fascinating is that these ignorant people actually do go to college to figure out the mindless sheeps with their names glorified on white papers with thousands of dollars in debt for the rest of their lives. But if we ask them a question, let's say on geography, history, or philosophy, they have no brain at all. They would rather play video games than learn a thing or two. It's weird times. The ignorant is considered a scholar, the liar is truthful, and the tyrant is even is seen as a savior. We have been indoctrinated years after years with compounded ignorance, deprived of true education, and we have been lied and given awards and trophies in glorified white papers, thinking it's the definition of happiness. And that's how we could only see it. But what we have failed to see is our creator. We have failed to know our creator. Our lives are supposed to revolve around the Almighty. Unfortunately, we are becoming like other previous nations, a narcissistic civilization of me, I, and myself. Imam al-Ghazali called this the dog soul and the pig soul. The people that are consuming and not knowing what they're consuming, not realizing that their consumption is actually killing them. This goes not only for produced food, but also for digital food. And the other group of people are affecting their rage on the world. The warmongers in terms of social media, business and politics that usually lead to violence. Excessive increase of violence and the dangerous types of expressions whether in matters of religion, politics, intellectual stream, or social behaviors have become a challenge to cope up with in the contemporary world. Principles and values are non-existent. While the laws of morals, the laws of ethics and corruption on earth in general have reached the skies, humanity is in loss without a moral vision for the future. Little do we know that morals and ethics are tied to our very own salvation. Listen carefully to this and pay attention. One of the best deed ever, unlike any other deeds, a special deed which is better than fasting every day of, the, of our life, which is better than going to Hajj every year for lifespan, which is better, which is even better than all of the deeds belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. Removing the hatred in our hearts towards others, no matter what and regardless of what. You know why? Because it's very difficult, difficult to conquer more than anything else. The strongest people are those who have power over themselves to remove every ounce of hatred and envy in their hearts. If we are to succeed in removing this hatred from our hearts, Wallahi, I swear by the Almighty, humans and animals would live together in harmony and none would attack the other. That's the impact of the purification of the heart, which is a requirement to believe in the Almighty God. In Sahih al-Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in a hadith reported by Nu'man al-Bashir, where the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudgha. إذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب Verily in the body is a piece of flesh which if found is if sound the entire body is sound and if corrupt the entire body is corrupt truly it is the heart so be the gardener of your heart the beauty of the heart is reflected in character Therefore, it is important to take care of it and embellish it. One of the many ways of you purifying the heart is by doing a good deed, secretly and sincerely. In the first surah, surah of uh, a chapter of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a good deed as a grain that sprouts. A seed always grows when it's buried deep in the soil. That is, the seed never visible, but the flowers 
fruits and vegetables. It gives us what is beautiful. If the seed is not buried deep in the soil, it will never grow. Do good deeds and move on. Don't show off, as that will make the heart barren with no flowers, fruits, or produce. Anas ibn Malik reported the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, لا يبلغ عبد حقيقة الإيمان حتى يحب للناس ما يحب لنفسه من الخير. The servant does not attain the reality of faith until he loves for people what he loves for himself of goodness. Where are we today from the sayings of the best of mankind? If we to claim true faith, it is impossible to have hate, greed, arrogance, and immorality combined in our believing hearts. According to Imam al-Ghazali's analysis, the major cause of moral decadence in the society today as a result of non-purification of the diseases of the heart, it makes an analytical exposition of the term Ulul al-Bab, men of intellect, as used by the Quranic verses to show those men are of high moral standard. It's the very center of the human being. The core that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls a loop is immaterial, immaterial reality. It is a spiritual reality because anything intellectual is in fact a spiritual reality. Thus, a purified soul will be of more quality, thus reducing corruption and moral decadence in the society. The ethical meaning of character is also defined as necessary for an agent's interest. The main interest for, man's, for man is personal salvation. God has no interests or needs and is under no necessity. He creates good for man out of his grace. When we talk about these principles, we're not targeting a, societal, a specific societal groups or parties other than ourselves. This actually goes to the Muslims as a whole, first and foremost, addressing the Muslim behaviors and ethics today. We used to inspire the world with our way of thinking and speech. Even our enemies wished to be so close and reach. We had the ability to absorb and integrate even the oppressor to the extent that some even became Muslims. This happened throughout our history. Not today. Not when we have this superficial, pseudo-religious person who authenticates vice. When vice becomes so deeply rooted that it affects the majority of a civilization, this is when we great disaster occurs. You find people doing everything for the wrong reasons, even those who you might think are the holiest of all people. This state is even worse than the pre-Islamic zealotry and ignorance, al-jahiliyyah. A real disaster behind this philosophy of the authentication of vice, which is like a cancer that consumes the body of the Muslim community. The cancerous cells become part of the body, but they consume the body completely. They destroy it and makes what remain remains of that body act against its own well-being. It's the same with people who have allowed vice to take root in their hearts while they think what they're doing is right and while they think they're acting in the service of religion. In reality, they destroy the idea of religion in the hearts of the youth. This is not a religion of God. This is a cancerous ideas spreading throughout the Muslim community and destroying the image of Islam Rather than Islam appearing as a mercy to the world, Satan uses ideas to ensure these ideas to ensure that Islam appears as an affliction to the world. Look at some of our masajids, and fortunately, they have become financial institutions catching up to other mega churches. You have to pay, excuse me, you have to pay a fee to attend a lecture given by one of the scholar, scholar celebrities. Some of our scholars are occupied with money-making productions, and when they offer something relevant, you gotta pay to attend. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Quran learning, you gotta pay. Tajweed, you gotta pay. Hadith, you gotta pay. Hafth, you gotta pay. Arabic classes, you gotta pay. Islamic school for kids, you gotta pay. 
How do you expect to raise a generation of change? And some might argue and say, but that's the way it is. The problem is we have accepted everything as normal and thrown the traditional teachings of Islam that produced Imam al-Ghazali, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, etc. We ended up with Imam Mo and Imam Joe, who are only concerned with the salary, Monday through Friday job. We have been to so many states interviewing Muslim families and the youth. The data collected is saddening and heartbreaking. The majority of Muslim families, including single mothers, this is excluding the divorce rates in the Muslim communities, can barely afford the daily livelihood. The youth in our communities lack guidance due to lack of outreach from our masajids. The result, you all know it, vulnerable youth struggling, excuse me, <clears throat> to identify themselves in a merciless environment. We have also interviewed new reverts who expressed their fr frustrations in connecting with the Muslim communities. And let's not mention the local racism Yes, the local racism some reverse exper experience from the very own Muslim communities. We'll have more podcasts on that, inshallah, as well. We can't hide our own problems anymore. Lack of reverse networking or hub of programs within the Muslim community makes it hard for reverts to cope with on their new journey. Their first year as reverts is the most challenging year of their life according to research, yet they end up on their own. Islam is entrusted with a sacred assignment to guide humanity to the straight path of fairness, equitability, and prosperity. Islam also recommends moderation, freedom of thoughts, gentleness, economy, and providence in everything, in belief, in worship, actions, and laws. Moderation, gentleness, and kindness are not only some general characteristics of Islam, these are fundam fundamental landmarks. The state of the Muslims today is so alarming and sometimes discouraging. And our scholars refuse to speak about these issues that matters. They focus on things that make their followers